Hey, welcome to the Ignition Point, the channel to help you launch your dreams and change the world. I'm here with my co-host Sean Finnegan today, and for our very first episode, we've got Lita Green, who is known as Hotness. Why are you known as Hotness? Well, Lita? first of all, let's talk about Hotness and Ignite. That's pretty exciting. Yes, yeah. and I'm Hotness. And it was meant to be. You had to be on it. You had to be the to first. Be first. Had to be. It's really very exciting for me. So Hotness is the kind of heat you put out into the world, right? So it's not just that I'm incredibly good looking. <laughs> it's because are you a wildfire out of control or are you a campfire that draws people close to you because of the unique spark or ignite right yeah. that we don't have to force connection it can simply be because of who we are because you feel that spark inside of you the first time i saw you we had a meeting here there was like maybe 20 25 entrepreneurs in the room I just remember coming in your energy was off the charts oh. it was um, it was amazing like uh, there was 25 people in there but you were just shining and amongst this group if you're gonna go by hotness you kind of need to own it and what's the se what's the secret to the energy it's how i talk to myself i do not allow what i call poopy talk you know we all poop <laughs> yeah right? or it's a medical yeah. condition pretty sure right Right? Yes, and we could discuss that, <laughs> right? But I'm feeling me full when I'm putting my makeup on, deodorant, I'm working out, when I'm doing whatever it is to start my day, whatever my routines are, I'm seeing myself being amazing in that day, mm. right? And so it's just become this habit of not just I am amazing, but I am doing, I am being. Mm. And people are like, oh, you need fake it till you make it. No, there's no fake it till you make it. You are. You're I enough now. now. Yeah. Right? Love that. And you just become more of what you are. But if you're faking, you might be trying to fake to be something else that you're not or shouldn't be. Okay, so did you start out that way and building that energy and belief in yourself inspired you to start your own businesses? Or did you learn that energy and that self-esteem as you grew? Of course I was born this way. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's part of becoming, right? Is becoming who we are, we have to go through some hard times. And unfortunately, there's no way around hard. And the truth, like most of us, lies in the middle. And for me, it was God and that direction that God was saying, I had value. And once you understand that, if you're religious or not, it will change your life. So once you have your intrinsic value, right. heart, what anybody else says, no matter how, no matter what the circumstances right. are. So that launched your drive into following your own dreams, right? Yeah. We all have poopy thoughts that right. come up. We're all human beings. Right. So we have those doubts that come in your mind. The poopy thoughts hit. How do you address those thoughts in your mind? So I imagine a filter on my head, like spaghetti sauce. And I just kind of, that thought, and I ask it. Where did that come from? We might have to look at the genesis of that thought. Is that thought even a from a source of truth? And this is where, you know, a belief in something beyond you is so valuable because there's those forces, right? He who is poopy, <laughs> you know, it's a theme. He who is poopy or he who is awesome, which one are you feeding? And at any point in the day, it's not like I'm a good person or I'm a bad person. It's is this thought of value. If you get too backed up in these big, huge labels, instead of just this thought, this moment. And become an aware right. of that and choosing which thought that you want to feed that energy into. Exactly. And not every thought I have is of desire, right? Not every thought I have is worth putting energy into. Just like, you know, if I, I'm a little toot. I don't have to go and tell people, hey, everybody, everybody, did you love the smell I just made? <laughs> Right? Just because right. I made it doesn't mean it's valid. So really, mindset is first. And then what drove you to start building your own So thing? even beyond mindset is what are you building it around? So if it's like, oh, I want to be confident or I want to be beautiful or I want to be desired. No, that's an outward. We got to put it about us inside. So first, before everyone was like, oh, I'm going to become a successful entrepreneur, I had to become a successful person within who I was. So I think too often people are like, want that, but are you willing to do the work on yourself? So you did a lot of inner work first. Yeah, lots and lots of inner conversations with myself. And like we were talking today at this amazing conference you put on, what are we talking about? What kind of work are we doing? And there's nothing wrong with doing hard. Sometimes I think people think they're getting resistance or it's hard. You might be the source of the resistance. So you go to another opportunity, you're still going to get resistance. Right? Yeah. So being willing to just pull up the sleeves and do the work. Yeah. What about those people who are going through dark times? Because you mentioned dark times. What would you? What would your advice be to somebody who's going through those times? And how do, how do they pull out of that? Well, I happened to write a book on this. Yeah. Right? You wrote the book. Yeah. So, yeah. But it is starting with understanding of your value. Like we were talking about. If you are going through hard times and you think that is labeling you, staying in that victim mindset that you are broken, that you're not enough, that you, you caused this, instead of being like, wait a minute, instead of asking why, ask what can I learn? Like the victim, why, how, where, with any question other than why. So then we can learn from it and grow from it. Right. Instead of seeing stuff. And turn it to your to your good. So w tell us about a time in your life when you, you kind of went through that transformation. So 15 years old, I'm living in a town called Blanding, Utah, without flavor. 
We're about to. <laughs> yes. And my mother was an English major, so I knew what it meant. And I stood up in front of the classroom and introduced myself, mortified to do so, probably peeing my pants a little bit because back then I was shy because I was feeding that I wasn't enough, that I wasn't good. Everyone around me had told me I had a terrible personality and all that, this kind of thing, right? So that again, that outside validation we're getting maybe truth and maybe not. And that's why it's so damaging to give your self-esteem over to the words of someone else. Right. Because they could build us up too much or they could tear us down too much. Mm. Or probably just need to be about here. And that's good. So I'm standing in front of the classroom to introduce myself. Everyone's laughing. And I'm like, you know, I'm just mortified. And then they're saying my name throughout the day. And come to find out my name, Lita, before I married the very sexy lover man, Nathan Green, I was my last name was Mon. So my name was Lita Mon. Lead them on. Or a perfect leader. Oh, right? Great. And so yeah, there was good. this shift, yeah. this big, huge spiritual experience where God literally said, you need to practice a new way of thinking of yourself because life had not been awesome. I was literally a joke name. So it's like, this is it. And I had what I would call my first prayer. And I did not use the in thou language. I was cursing at the heavens and you messed up and doing the why, right? Why did you do this? Blah, blah, blah. And it just, well, you need to practice a new way of thinking of yourself. So affirmations, but deeper than that. So once you found that identity of lead them on, how did you use that to launch your dreams? Well, I didn't marry Mr. Strong, Roy Ben Lita Monstrom. Be good of a dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did not start with there was a dream. There wasn't this you know, really like laid out plan. It was simply motivated by I needed to support myself. And I could see that places I would go, a lot of times employers just saw, you know, my good looks. They didn't see, you know, if I worked really hard, they're like, oh, it's because she flirted mm. if I had good sales numbers. And so I was like, I need to just be my own boss so that I can define what my value is. Have, so it does go back to that core of how you see yourself and one opportunity, the next opportunity, the next opportunity. And I love the idea of if you could like pick from all of your choices choices in life, but not everybody has like all these choices laid out. Mm. Now I have lots of choices, but when I was starting, I was like, what can I do that someone will pay me for? What can I sell that somebody will pay me for other than my body, which would have been a choice from where I came from, but I decided for moral and ethical reasons not to sell my body. It's a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> right, for sure. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us today. We love to, you know, invite entrepreneurs on here to inspire others to be able to start their own journey. And who was the first on? Hotness. Yeah. Yes. Night the ignition yeah. point. Thanks, everybody. Love it.